another parts factory installation tutorial video. Today we're going to be chucking this power steering pump on this VZ Holden Commodore 6 cylinder. Now the VZ and the VE do share the same Allotech uh, engine, therefore almost exactly the same power steering pump design. So this video is going to be in relation to VEs and VZ V6. Now it's a fairly easy job. Realistically, because there's so much room in the front with, between the engine and the uh, radiator, it's quite easy to get in there and access everything relative to the job. The belt tension is extremely easy to access with a 3.8 drive bar. So all we're going to do is we're going to pull back the belt tensioner, pull the belt off, obviously do the 310 mils on the front of the pump, pull it forward, crack the uh, high pressure line, use a pair of pointy nose pliers to pull off the low pressure return line, and then yeah, obviously the pump's going to be pulled off. We'll have a quick look uh, between our parts factory uh, power steering pump and the genuine one. We'll quickly talk about why they fail, and then we're obviously going to get back, smash the new one back on. Um, I'm going to re-top re up the power steering fluid reservoir, and then I'm going to direct you in the way of another YouTube video that'll teach you how to prime the power steering pump fluid system. It's very important, that last step. So I'm going to have a completely separate video to get that job done. Alright, now just before we start, if you are interested in this product, we do have these available in Australia, in stock, free express overnight delivery Australia wide. If you are interested in that, head on to www.partsfactoryoz.com.au or check out our Instagram at partsfactoryoz. On our Instagram channel, or Instagram page rather, we have um, basically all of our links that you might need, including online downloadable inst installation inst tutorial text instructions, obviously all of our YouTube links for all of the different cars, and if you want to be featured, Make sure you uh, take a photo of yourself performing this DIY repair, send it over to us, we'll post it up on our Instagram page, and yeah, give you a shout out. Alrighty guys, let's get into the installation. Right, so before we get started, it's important to know the, uh, the basic tools we're going to need to get the job done. Now, I've got my electric power wrench, I find them extremely good for this type of job when you're getting in, and maybe in areas out of your reach, you can actually, instead of you know, smashing your hands on all the things around the engine bay. They do a great job at uh, cracking nuts, etc, etc. We're going to need a basic uh, socket set, a pair of pointies, and a flat edge screwdriver. I'd say uh, that's about all we're going to need. Um, but one thing I will say, we are going to leak a bit of power steering fluid onto the floor. So if you are not in a workshop, or even if, um, if you're not in a workshop, I recommend putting a little rag on the ground underneath our uh, operating area. That way anything that drips down is caught by the rag, you can put the rag in the trash and then yeah, easy clean up. Alrighty, let's um, get into it. So, first things first, we're going to remove this large trim piece from the front of the uh, car here. So we're going to use a flat head screwdriver, just stab it in here and just twist the screwdriver until you see these little trim tabs come up, then they just pull out like that. At one, two, three, four. Now these trim tabs aren't exactly easy to find or replace, so I'd highly recommend putting them somewhere where you're not going to lose them or forget where you put them. Way up in the top there. Now sure that's going to be it. You might have one up here, but it looks like the previous owner didn't put that back. And what else does it wrap onto? Yeah, so there's a little push tab there, goes onto the radiator, that's okay, just pull up on it. Ch chuck that out of the way. Okay, so in order to get down to the power steering pump, which is all in under this trim, I'm also going to pull this engine cover off. Do the same thing, placing it out of the way. Then this air intake pipe's in our way, so I'm going to pull the whole air box out. Which to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to do this torx bit over here. And there looks to be another torx bit down the bottom of down there. Now, this one you won't need an extension, but I recommend a big bar with a torx bit to get down into there to pull that air box out of the way. Right, so we have our torx bit on the top here. Now 
Got one down the bottom. And yet, as you can see straight away, we're able to pull up on that uh, air box. I'm going to unplug this uh, MAF sensor plug, pushing down on the tab, pulling it out of the way, even just tucking it there behind that radiator so it's completely out of our way. Looks like we have a 7mm sort of main throttle body. And all you want to do is just give that a wiggle. You'll notice it pops off like that. I'm hoping that's just a full lift out. We're going to put our air box out of the way. We're going to drag this pipe get it completely out of the working area like so right now you can see we have excellent access to the whole power steering fluid reservoir area so first things first I'm gonna put our little towel under the area basically in case any power steering fluid drips it's gonna be caught by that little rag and we can pick it up at the end Okay, so this power steering fluid reservoir should just be able to grab your flathead screwdriver, tuck it down in here, you'll just see a little tab in there, I'm just going to bend that out to the side a bit and just pull up on that pump. You see why I'm doing this? It's because all of the space to get into this um, power steering pump here has been exposed for us. Next step, before we go any further at all, we want to crack the main high pressure line before undoing the pump because once you undo the pump, cracking that uh, line becomes significantly harder. To crack that line, you use a 16mm, hopefully just turn it clockwise, anti-clockwise, sorry, like that, and you'll notice there it's able to be undone by hand. Going to wrap that line up in another rag. I'm going to pull it out of the way, just putting it probably under this wiring over here, leaving it completely out of our way. Now the next step is you can see this power steering pump is wrapped with a belt, it's your, uh, your auxiliary belt. On this tensioner here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but basically behind this pipe you'll find a half inch drive, yeah that's a half inch drive, yep, oh actually let me just check, yeah half inch drive little insert or you can use a bar put on that tensioner and basically twist the uh, tensioner around pull that belt off resting it to the side being careful not to drop it off any other pulleys because we don't want to be mucking around with having to reinstall anything a tool such as this one will be placed into that tensioner as I said and you want to rotate it clockwise even if you wrap a round, rag around it just to save your hands. And you can see there when I do that, that tensioner loses a lot of its, um, that belt, sorry, it loses a lot of its tension. And lift it up, just so we can get in there a little bit better. Pull it off that pump like that. Okay. So now that it's off the power steering pump, we just want to see if we can keep it on every other pulley and kind of drag it out of our way. We're not going to knock it or anything as we pull the pump off. Okay, so at this point the pump's free spinning. The last things that hold it on are the three 10mm bolts, which there's one there, one there, and one there, which you access through the holes of the, the uh, pulley itself. Undo your first 13 mil. You can see now that I've done the two main bolts, the pump wants to actually move off to the side like that. See how I can bring the pump right up here. That gets our pipe ready to be um, downwards facing so that um, none of the fluid comes rushing out. And as I said at the beginning, keep it up into the air, maybe even just put it out of the way like that. Realistically, we've actually lost next to no fluid at all, which I'm very happy with. Right, that was one of the most easy power steering pumps I've ever pulled off any car. I did say at the beginning, extremely easy to access as we've got all this space in the front. Now, it ended up being two 13 mils on a VZ, 
from memory, I'm pretty sure it's three 10 mils on a VE. It's not gonna change much, guys. Um, the pumps are still exactly the same. Um, now, I've, I've brought out of, uh, one of our parts factory versions today just to show you, basically, they're an exact OEM duplicate replica. Uh, they come with a three year warranty. We've had almost next to no failure or failed units. I think maybe one, sometimes the manufacturer, you know, obviously has a fault rate of about, you know, 0.5%. So usually they're pretty reliable. I've had no comebacks, I'm very, very happy. Today I'm gonna to be reinstalling this one. There was nothing wrong with it. There's no point in me chucking a new one on. But yeah, I've just brought it out today to show you basically this would go smack bang on. You obviously prime the system, prime the pump. They do have a little bit of oil in built into them from the get go. But yeah, there is a professional, uh, there's a professional method to get uh, the pump primed. It's very important. The pumps blow up if you don't do it correctly. So yeah, the instructions for that video will be at the end of this video. All right, so we're gonna be putting this pump back on. Um, it's literally the same steps, but in reverse. So as we did, we're gonna put this uh, low pressure pipe back on, making sure it's nice and straight, the hose clamp. You wanna tighten her up before you put the pump back on so you can get in there and access it, like so. Now, I'm gonna rotate the pump around, get it facing the correct way up, because you can install it upside down. High pressure line upwards. And at this point, you just slide it into place, making sure none of this is getting caught or twisting the wrong way, etc., etc. As you can see, it just needs to be wiggled into place. I've now managed to put the bolt through. Now, if you think you've got the nuts in, we want to use a very low powered setting. You want to see if it grabs like it has. Same thing on the bottom bolt. Yep, it's looking good. Right, now that we've um, managed to reinstall the pump back onto the engine, we're gonna bring our high pressure line, trying not to lose any oil. First things first, we're gonna wrap up our two oil rags. And we're gonna put them in the bin. Now we're gonna use our 16 mil to tighten up our main high pressure output line. Should be very little effort to get um, this main high pressure 16 mil in. Right, now that it's tight, we're gonna reposition our high pressure power steering reservoir back where it belongs, which is just here. Bring it over to your bracket, Give it a nice push down. So, now that we've got everything reinstalled, the next step is to put our belt tensioner back on. So we're gonna pull the belt tensioner to the left again, grab your belt, making sure to not pull it off any other pulley. I'm gonna wrap it back around power steering pump. Hopefully everything goes on nice and easy. Mine has. And you want to, before you let go of the tension, you want to make sure it's on every other pulley nice and straight. So mine was off the tensioner pulley a little bit. Mine's still on the air clump pump. It's still on all the idler pulleys. Still on the alternator and still on the balancer itself. Up here, the water pump as well. There you go. Okay, we don't need that tool anymore. We've put all the belt tensioner back on, fluid, low pressure lines, if you want. Just tighten this a little bit more. One extra little turn, it's not gonna hurt anybody. And that's it, she's on. Right, we're now gonna reinstall all of the other little bits and pieces we pulled off to gain access to the area. Before we do that, we're gonna do a quick wipe down of the areas we were working in. Anything you won't be able to access once it's all reinstalled. Tucking our rag out of the way. Remember this pipe goes into your overflow bottle. You want to push it in there and then just tuck it down like this because it sits underneath that um, air box. We're going to bring this air box in, remembering that it all positions itself like this. 
We want to tuck that on like that. Because that tells us that everything's lining up. I think this pipe actually went over the top. Yep, in that little hook there. Which looks professional. We want to plug our electrical plug in. Like so. We want to start off by lining up our bolt. I think that they're already both in, which is lucky. Yep, look at that. First shot. One in here. This one you want to use a low power function. As soon as you feel resistance, you want to do it by hand. And that will do us there. That doesn't need to be tight at all. Now remember you have this um, vacuum line which just tucks around this uh, little housing here. Chucking that over that. Now that we're back up to this section, we're going to chuck our engine cover back on. Like so. We'll bring our big trim piece up. Hopefully you remember where you put all your trim bits. I'm going to then going to do a quick wipe down of any further spots that were exposed to that fluid. And that's it. Easy as that. Overall, 25 minutes to swap out a power steering pump on a VZV Commodore is outstanding. I'm thinking that the savings that you could uh, have just because you're doing this type of job yourself, upwards of $500. I would say that a, mechan a mechanic, if they were to purchase the pump, sell it to you, they're gonna double it, double their money. So basically 350 for the pump, 400, something like that. Then they're gonna charge you 80 to $100 an hour just to put that on. And who knows how long they're gonna uh, write down that it took to get this type of pump installed. So just keep that in mind. But as I said, on the Parts Factory website, we've got this pump available for $153 delivered overnight. So, it's a no-brainer, three-year warranty. Then you put it on yourself, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, go to the shop, get some power steering fluid, refill your reservoir. On the side of the reservoir, you've got low and high. Make sure it's somewhere in the center or up to the high mark. Go to the end of this video. I'll have a link there, how to prime a power steering fluid system. It's just involving a few rotations of the steering wheel with a jack, etc., etc., etc. The other video will show you what to do. And then yeah, that's your car back on the road in literally under a day and a half. So yeah, happy with that. Alrighty guys, as I said, follow us on Instagram, Parts Factory Oz. We'd love for you to come and check out some of our content and make sure you give us a like and subscribe. Plenty of stuff like this coming out, help you do all your DIY motor vehicle repairs at home. My name is Lucas Strabs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.